day guys not quite 120 but it's up there in the teens and we're driving a somewhat special Jeep it's an LT L86 with an 8 speed 8L90 we do have an LT1 intake on this one and it runs excellent we got 37s on 538 gears so as you can imagine this thing is like a go-kart even though it's a heavy JK we're gonna take it to the mountain tomorrow and we'll see you then here we are in a 2011 JKU Rubicon with a 6.2 L86 LT direct injected engine and 8L90 transmission let me make a prediction back in the 70s and 80s most of our engine conversions used small and big block Chevys in the early 2000s we were using the Gen 3s when much of the market was still using the small and big block Chevys. 2007, we did our first fully networked Gen 4 LS engine. The rest of the market was still using the Gen 3 motors. We got cruise control, tap shift, all the functionality over 10 years ago with a Gen 4 engine. As most of you know, we've been doing the LTs now for well over a year, and it's been a learning curve. However, I think we're finally at the point where if you don't use the LT engine, you're somewhat behind the time. I believe we were one of the first companies to network the LT and get the functionality that we wanted. And integrating it into the JK wasn't easy, but the end result is this is the future. There's no denying that. If you're still putting LS3s in late model JKs and the new JL, JT, then you're just going to be behind the times. There's a lot of legality problems with that. And the fact is that these new engines with high compression, direct injection, continuous variable valve timing simply have an advantage over the older engines. We're seeing performance numbers that exceed anything the LS did. We're seeing economy numbers that exceed anything the LS did. What's really amazing about these LTs is the torque they can put out on the bottom end. And that's really what matters because it's torque that moves you. Horsepower keeps you there. You talk to the old NASCAR guys, it is about horsepower, but a lot of it's about torque. Torque is what gets you where you want to be. So these LT engines put out tremendous torque at low RPM. That also means when you're on the highway, like going up this parkway, you can stay in high gear. I'm in eighth gear right now going up the parkway, and many of the LS engines, I'd be dropping a gear or two. So the end result is the market just has to move to this new technology. I said all along in my videos that until the LT actually proves itself and gets sorted, and has aftermarket support, it wouldn't make the best choice. And I think we're in that transitional period right now where the aftermarket is really catching up. Programmers are starting to figure out how these LTs work, and more importantly, the transmissions. These are torque management based operating systems, so they're pretty complex. But the end result is you're gonna end up having a more powerful vehicle that gets better economy. GM has, of course, updated the hardware over the years, and now that driving these LTs is becoming routine for me, I'm really noticing the differences between the LT and the other engines out there. And I'm not just talking about the LS, I'm talking about the Pentstars and the Hemis and everything else. And what that is, is tremendous horsepower with really good manners and tremendous bottom end torque. A little bit about this JK, this has an L86, I do believe it's a 2017. We did convert it over to an LT1 intake. The LT1 intake is a lot more compact, it just looks a lot cooler and it gives you plenty of hood clearance. The L86 has a monster intake on it, and it can be tight in a JK, especially the early model JKs that had the 3.8s. The L83 has a slightly smaller intake. The L83 is the 5.3 version of this engine. And I'll say, I think the L83 is enough for most JKs. The L83 has a lot of power, a lot of torque. Now, if you're pushing 40s on a really heavy JK and you're up at altitude, yeah, you gotta get the, the 6.2. But really, the 5.3 has a lot of power. It's not like the Gen 4 5.3 It was limited on torque. And the Gen 4 5.3 is a great motor. It'll get your JK where you want to go, but it doesn't have the high compression and the torque of these LTs. So here's the deal. As we move forward in time, we got to go to the LT engine. We're learning the LT engine. We've networked the LT engine. We're integrating it perfectly into the JK and the JL for full functionality. Not only for full functionality, but for emissions compliance. You guys really gotta start thinking about that. And as far as I'm concerned, these LTs are just amazing engines. And the engine that comes out on top with the least amount of compromise is going to be these LT motors. Every time I get into the throttle a little bit in one of these LTs, it just surprises me how much torque it has. 
a decent economy is reachable. However, don't expect too much. These JKs are heavy. These tires have a lot of drag. You start running 37s and 40s, you got some really heavy rims and tires exceeding 150 pounds each. Don't expect to get the economy that you're going to get in a truck with 29 or 30 inch tires. It's just not going to happen. We of course are shifting gears into the LT. We have to use the LT and the modern transmissions for the JL and the upcoming JT. The flip side of these powerful LT engines is they do have technology built in for economy. They have cylinder displacement changing technology. Whether you want to call it displacement on demand, air fuel management, multiple displacement system, basically they can cut off half the engine to make it run like a smaller engine, therefore not having the pumping losses of a larger engine. We are taking a hard look at the new 10 speed, but we have to approach it with caution because these transmissions are software driven. In fact, the transmission I'm driving right now, the 8L90, is a awesome transmission, but it does take a long time to figure out how this thing works. These transmissions have what's called characterizations. The transmissions actually learn volumes and flows and pressures. So yeah, that's my opinion. I think that going into the future, you guys are going to have to seriously consider the LT engine. The tuning issues, the pricing issues, the availability issues are going to be a thing of the past here shortly. Even though we pioneered the trail for these functional LT swaps, others are going to have offerings and give you some choices. I'm actually really excited to drive our JL with the 5.3 LT. We got a couple of 5.3 L83s with six speeds in the shop right now and they just drive awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this eight speed LT JL. Guys, the JL is pretty much ready to drive but with all the projects we got going on it keeps getting pushed back but you're going to be seeing some videos on that one coming up real soon in the meantime we're going to take this jk up to the mountain and see how this lt does